And the fact that there's less than 500 of them in South Africa alone makes every sighting with them special, especially when you see moments like this, when you can see the affection between the different members of the pack. Playing, nipping, it's just so fantastic. There's a big male there that's standing in the front. And I saw the pregnant female earlier as well. She's in there somewhere, playing along with the rest of the dogs. Oh, somebody's got a nasty wound at the back there. I think, didn't one of the wild dogs have this injury for quite a long time, if I'm not mistaken? I think that that, that injury's been around for quite a long time. It could, could be a different dog and it could be a different injury. That one looked quite fresh, but it could just take, be taking quite a while to heal. It doesn't seem to be hampering the dog either way. I wonder where they're going to den this year. It's no secret that we would absolutely love for them to den on Juma. Can you just imagine if we had a wild dog den with puppies? <laughs> <laughs> I'm chuckling because Shamsun <laughs> seemed to predict my thought pattern and wants to know what are the chances of that happening. What are the chances that they will den on Juma? Slim, I would say. Slim to none. Although a bit better, a bit better than perhaps last year when the lions were spending a huge amount of time on Juma. And that would be a big red flag for a wild dog pack trying to choose a suitable den site. Perhaps, perhaps we have a chance, but I don't think so. Chances are they're going to go and den in their regular places, which I think for the sand pack, if I'm not mistaken, is a property called Ottawa. Now, unfortunately, we don't have that much more time to spend with these dogs. We're going to have to move out of the sighting shortly to make space for other vehicles. And there you go, Michael, yes, wild dogs will regularly use the same den site year after year. They can change, they're not, um, they're not strict about it. They can swap around and they can use different den sites at different times. Um, especially if they're, you know, like I said, if there's a situation where the lions are spending a lot of time near their regular den site, they might decide to go elsewhere. There's some perfect termite mounds on Juma. I'm sort of trying to get that message through to them via subliminal messaging. Okay, guys, come to Juma. It's nice there. There's lots of impala. Lots and lots of impala. And some termite mounds. It's a good spot. I'm starting to feel like a property developer or real estate agent. I'm gonna start cold calling them. <laughs> I'm gonna start cold calling them in the middle of the night. Hey, wild dogs. <laughs> Scrapping over what left, what is left of what, up until a few hours ago, was a healthy, happy impala ram. That's what happens during breeding season. The rutting season of the male impala, they're just not paying the same attention that they might otherwise. And all of the predators can take advantage of that. Pups are almost the same size as the adults now. They're a year old. And they're almost indistinguishable from the rest of the pack. I'm not sure how many pups the sand pack had this year, but they seem to have done quite well. Uh, we've spoken about the fact that they are one of the most endangered, endangered predators that we see out here. In fact, the second most endangered canid in Africa. And Sid, you want to know if the populations are rising or falling? To the best of my knowledge, they've remained relatively steady, but I think you'll probably find that in all reality, they're actually dropping a little bit because these are creatures that need huge amounts of space, which inevitably brings them into conflict with human beings. And they're seen as a pest in certain areas because, of course, they're such, such effective hunters and their, their numbers have to consume large amounts of meat such that they could be a serious threat to livestock, unfortunately. 
So the smaller their habitats get, which is a, a general trend within Africa, the lower their numbers are going to be. The higher the concentration of lions forced into a smaller area, the more the wild dogs are going to struggle. They're also exceptionally prone to diseases. Because of their um, level of relatedness to, wild, to domestic dogs, and also, <laughs> I got it, I got the prize. And also the fact that they are such sociable creatures, diseases spread very, very easily between wild dog pa within wild dog packs. So they're exceptionally susceptible to canine distemper and to rabies, which are some of the biggest threats to a wild dog population. And we're just gonna have to do some shuffling to make space for Ryan's guests to come and join us. It's made for... Oh. How's it, Ryan? How are you? Good, thanks. And Painted Wolf, who is on to a, a good, good username there, Painted Wolf would like to know if it's possible the decline of wild dogs is related to their rather unfortunate name. Because a wild dog sounds like a feral dog, something not really worth protecting. I think that there is a, a vague connection, and I think that the name change is a very good idea, to try and change them to Painted Dog or to Painted Wolf. It will certainly help to reduce the stigma attached to them, but I don't think it's really... Let me try and phrase this properly. I don't think it's going to go a huge way in terms of saving their numbers. You need a far greater educational program, reintroduction programs, and there are. I mean, the Endangered Wildlife Trust, the EWT, does huge amounts to monitor these amazing creatures and to try and reintroduce them back into their historical range. I hope the name change does help to reduce the stigma. I mean, if you read the book by Louis, St uh, Louis Stevenson Hamilton, who was one of the, he, he basically was instrumental in founding the Kruger National Park back in the 20s, the 1920s. If you read his book, he talks about how he would shoot wild dogs on sight and try to get rid of them because they were, it was basically a carnivore extermination program because people's idea of conservation at that time, entirely well-meaning, was to get rid of the carnivores that were reducing the number of antelope. So terribly, terribly misguided. But it'll take a long time to shake the idea, especially for farmers struggling elsewhere, to shake the idea that these animals are not pests. They're beautiful, rare and unique. I mean, look at the spots on their coat. Extraordinary looking creatures. Hopefully it will change. They also turn up in the strangest of places. The reserve that I used to work on never had any wild dogs on it until all of a sudden it now has a pack of wild dogs that denned there last year and they now live there. They just came running in from the Kruger, crossroads and settled in. I love that. Jules, you want to know what the local or Shagan name for wild dogs is? Mashloa. Mashloa is the, as far as I know, the Shangar name for wild dogs. You'll hear us call them Madash a lot on the radio. That's um, part of Game Drive. Oh, it, it, it's, a, it's a weird thing with Game Drive lingo on our radios. We use a lot of different words for different animals and often it isn't actually um, related to the local Shangan name and of course we've got lots of different languages here in South Africa so it's inevitable that you'll get some odd crossover moments where you get different languages popping in English, Zulu, all sorts of things and Gala is not the name for lions either the Shangan name for lions hold on a second let's just go forward a little bit we'll get a better view so Mashloa H. The HL sound is the sh sound. Mashloa. Not entirely sure how to spell that though. You'd have to ask James. He's much better at languages than I am. If I had to guess, I would say M A H L. No, I'm not going to guess. I don't know. We have to ask James. Finishing off the last bits of Impala, one just sort of lying there and holding on for dear life. And very shortly, I think they're going to go and have a rest. <coughs> Let me just 
jump on the Game Drive channel quickly. Speaking of our Game Drive lingo. Are there any stations on standby for these, Madash? Copy, copy, standby one, you can make your way. Okay, everybody, it's time for us to say goodbye to the wild dogs. Unfortunately, there are other people that would like to come see them. If they stick around towards the end of the sunrise safari, we might be able to make our way back in. It just depends on how things go. I don't want to leave either, I promise. But it's only fair that everybody gets an opportunity to see these wonderful creatures.